Hey everyone, everything cool with you? Here we are with the newest episode of the saga, the first Saiyan, the Saiyan God. I know you're anxious to know what's going to happen, but don't be in a hurry. I guarantee that today's episode will be epic. But first we have to say a few things so that we can finally continue with the video. If you like these videos and really like to follow along, I ask that you leave a like on this video, as much as it is annoying to ask. However, it helps a lot in the performance of the channel and motivates us to always keep bringing you amazing videos. That said, after the recap of the last episode of the saga, you will have the new episode. In the last episode of the saga, we had the story of Wukong, the one who was different from the other Saiyans, for being wise and mysteriously powerful. The Saiyan Wukong tried to guide everyone on the planet to a better and civilized path. Wukong wanted to make his race as great as anything else, until one day he met Jin, a Saiyan woman that Wukong had met in a short time, but had already created a strong bond with the girl. However, not everything is flowers, and even Wukong knew it. The Saiyans attacked and killed Jin, and even though he was angry, sad, and even had an immense desire to take revenge, Wukong gave up and isolated himself from the Saiyans of the planet. What does Wukong intend to do during this time that he is isolated? Will Wukong take revenge on the Saiyans responsible for Jin's death? You'll find that out in today's episode, but first, turn off your bedroom lights and grab your lunch because today's episode is just beginning. Many years have passed since the previous events in the life of the legendary Wukong. He then decided to get away from all the wild Saiyans and decided to create his own temple by isolating himself from everyone. Wukong understood that he was different from the others and that he didn't want to become a primate Saiyan like the others and for that reason he didn't take revenge on the Saiyans responsible for Jin's death. Wukong had become a legend for the Saiyans and this legend was passed down from generation to generation but few members of the Saiyan race really believed in this legend because when Wukong decided that he was going to disappear forever, he left no trace. Once a group formed by four Saiyan explorers, in one of their great adventure decided to explore a temple very well hidden and difficult to find. That was the mysterious temple of Wukong. They heard legends that the Saiyan god would be alive and that he had his temple in the center of the Saiyan planet. So the Saiyan's quartet went looking, as they hoped to find treasures and even knowledge. These curious Saiyans were looking to find more information about the legend of Wukong. They had already talked to even the oldest Saiyans on the planet, they had already looked everywhere, but after a long time looking, they finally found the place that they were looking for so much that it was the Temple of Wukong. The explorers were slowly approaching the temple and Vados, who was the Saiyan responsible for leading the group, walked ahead with courage and caution, as he knew the possibility of there being traps there. Since as he was hidden, whoever built this temple, he most certainly wanted to prevent invaders. Vados and his group walked suddenly, until Vados silently gestured to the rest of the group to stop approaching that ancient building. He took a stone and threw it precisely in a deliberately thin and almost imperceptible line. When breaking that line with a stone, several sharp projectiles came out of the thicket. Varos took one of these projectiles and realized that they were darts. They weren't big enough to kill someone, but at their tip there was a liquid that was probably sleeping. Varos then assumed a worried posture because this type of trap was not supposed to be working after years, so they thought that someone else had found this temple before and was protecting it from what was inside. The explorers had already faced many things together and that wasn't enough to end their determination and their thirst for information. On the contrary, everyone opened a smile and became even more cautious and excited. When approaching a little closer, the group of Saiyans noticed that there were writings in the ancient form of the language which were on the outside of the walls and even some drawings of extinct animals. Whoever built this temple certainly had information from decades ago and certainly had immense wisdom. Knowing how to plant traps with sleeping pills, one of the four Saiyans was beginning to suspect that Wukong was really real and that this was his temple. The young Saiyans who were sure before that even if Wukong had existed, surely he would already be dead of old age. They were now in doubt because of the environment in which they found themselves. Varos was in front of the stairs that led to the entrance of the temple, but Varos didn't want to enter because the stairs had a strange pattern. When he put his hand on the stairs and pressed them, he noticed that they lowered like a button. However, despite his curiosity, he didn't dare finish pressing and decided to climb the side of the temple and go to the entrance. Varos together with his group arrived at the entrance that was incredibly dark. A Saiyan called Kalia, who accompanied him as part of the group, pointed a flashlight at it, revealing that the corridor of the supposed entrance was in the shape of a giant channel, as if it had to get something rolling. The leader of the explorers did not let his friend pass that way, until Kindron, the youngest member of the group, pointed to the top of the temple, exclaiming, Look, there is a second entrance at the top. 
and if you analyze it correctly, you will see that the relief that makes up the drawings from a staircase to the top, said the young Saiyan, calling the attention of all his friends. Varos, who was proud of his friend, who despite his age showed great talent, stroked Kindran's head and said, Very well observed, Kindran. Come on, one at a time, said Varos, leaving Kindran happy. The whole group followed Varos in a single file, with a meter and a half of distance between each one of the group. Varos glanced at the entrance and then entered, not noticing any traps. All members entered with him. But as soon as Varos took the first step, he ended up stepping on a sound trap. Now, whoever was there in the temple knew that there were invaders. Varos noticed that the entrance he used did not serve as an exit. The people who built the temple planned that when someone noticed that entrance and ended up stepping into a trap, he would be forced to follow the path no matter the danger. Taktong calmed the group and said, Well, we only have one option now, said Taktong. The members agreed and cheered up again. Filled with courage, they advanced along the path with bravery in their eyes. But they obviously walked more cautiously, as they had been discovered. The owner of the temple decided that he would not move, as he thought that the internal traps would do the trick. First, they walked slowly down a corridor filled with absolute and pure silence. It was a long corridor and apparently there was nothing. They were walking slowly, afraid of the traps, but apparently there weren't any more. It took them a few minutes to complete the course because it was a large corridor and the group was walking cautiously. The corridor had turned to the left where it would take them to the room of the owner of the temple. The fourth member, who had not yet been introduced, took the lead and then spoke. There's nothing. Let me go ahead. You can rest assured about that. Leave it to me, said the Saiyan. Varos then retorted, saying, Hal, it's dangerous. You shouldn't be leading us into a place we know has hidden pitfalls. Stay here and follow me, warned Varus. Hal observed his leader and disobeyed him again. Come on, Varus, this isn't hard at all. Look and learn, said Hal, showing off. Hal started walking carelessly. He even seemed to be running. Varus tried to catch up with Hal, but he was determined to advance alone and be the leader of the group. While Varus kept with the others, However, Hal ended up activating a trap by stepping on a transparent wire. Hal covered his face with his arms, thinking that something might come to kill him. Then and there, but nothing came. Hal slowly lowered his arms that were protecting his face and then started to create a smile on his face. It wasn't today that Hal would die. At least, that's what he thought. In an instant, a violent breeze hit the place. Dust rose everywhere, and Hal had his vision completely blacked out. In a moment, the dust dispersed, revealing what had happened. Instantly, Varus covered Kindran's eyes. Daktom began to vomit desperately. What had been revealed after the dust dispersed was Hal's destroyed body. That breeze wasn't just a simple wind. Something pushed Hal at high speed, causing his body to crash against the wall and be destroyed in pieces. A more detailed view of Hal's destroyed body would be as follows. His clothes were completely destroyed on impact, except for his pants. His jaw was knocked out of place, leaving only his upper teeth. His feet were ripped off, remaining where he was the moment he activated the trap. All members of the group were in complete shock, especially Daktom, who apparently had been the most shaken by that scenario. Dust covered the transparent wires, making it possible to identify where they were and facilitating the passage to that place. The group continued walking through that location again, the entrance doubled. This time, it had been to the right place. They walked and walked for several minutes without fearing what might interfere with their plans. The group continued and continued until they tired and rested for a few minutes. Only in the meantime, hours had passed. The group's rest was over, so they went to the next room, where apparently everything was quiet. Of course, they were suspicious, and after everything that had happened, they were traumatized. The only one who hadn't been shaken was Kindred, who had his eyes blindfolded by Varus at the time of what happened to Hal. Of course, after that, they walked for a little longer, and then finally reached the next room, which was a straight corridor. Again, the group walked until Doctome stepped into a trap. The moment he realized that the trap had opened, activated, Doctome began to shed tears and cry in despair. He even tried to run, but unfortunately, it didn't work. A pillar emerged from the ground, hitting Doctome's belly right after. A pillar appeared from above, descending and crushing his body at once. His head came rolling off the ground. His eyes were still open and watering. Varus pulled Kindrin by the arm and began to run desperately. He didn't know how, but he kept losing his friends in that miserable way. The next room was numbered the number one. Maybe that meant something, but they didn't know the use of that number. Not yet. Varus triggered the last trap in that room. The moment he realized that he pushed Kindrin as far away as possible. 
Taking a last look at his younger companion in a matter of seconds, a kind of square covered the hall, and those walls were formed, began to crush Varos. Kindren was in complete shock. Varos was like an older brother to him, and he had just been killed in front of him. Kindren then got up and took steps back until he hit a door. He looked slowly to the side and saw a hundred numbers, and after thinking, he put the number one. The door opened, revealing Wukong. Kindren approached the huge hall the king was in and bowed before him, watching him from the bottom up. What will happen? Will Wukong kill all the remaining Saiyans, or will we stop it? Questions like these will only be answered in the next episode, because today's episode ends here. Hey guys, I know it's sad when today's video unfortunately ends, but don't worry, because the next episodes are coming. And if you liked it, don't forget to leave your like because it helps us a lot and motivates us to continue with these videos that you like so much. Comment your theories of what might happen in the next episode and share the video with your friends so you can watch it together. That's it, see you guys!